In my own opinion, a garden is a place where you find vegetables and greenies. Welcome back to the Gabby Show. This video is presented to you by the Gabby Show. My name is Pilan Gabriel Marapira. You are tuned into the Great Show for all content. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to also leave us a notification button so that we send you a reminder whenever we post new videos. Today it is a, once again a travel show. We're going to be looking at the three most beautiful gardens in South Africa, uh, ladies and gentlemen so don't forget to um, recommend this channel to your friends uh, so let's get on with the video so guys we're going to be starting off with this uh kirsten bost national uh botanical garden uh which is an important botanical garden nestled at the eastern foot of table mountain in cape town uh, the garden is one of the 10 national botanical gardens covering five south africa's six different biomes and administered by the south african national biodiversity institute Prior to 1 September 2004, the institute was known as the National Botanical Institute. Uh, so this uh, this is a botanical garden located in Cape Town, South Africa, uh, which covers an area of at least 528 hectares, which is uh, equivalent to 1,300 acres uh, created in 1913. It is operated by South African National Biodiversity Institute, SANPI, um, and uh, Christian Post places a strong emphasis on the cultivation of indigenous plants when Christian Bosch was founded in 1913 to preserve the flora native to South Africa's territory, it was the first botanical garden in the world with this ethos at a time when invasive species were not considered an ecological and environmental problem. The garden includes a large conservatory, the Botanical Society Conservatory, exhibiting plants from a number of different regions, including savannah, fine balls, karoo, and others. Outdoors, the focus is on native to the Cape region highlighted by the spectacular uh, collections of proteas. It is a level or IV accredited operator by the ABNET Abretum Accreditation Program and the Motion Abretum. Uh, so the history of this uh, garden starts in 19, uh, in 1660 by order of Jan van Riebeck, a hedge of wild almond and brambuzwe was planted to afford some protection to the pre perimeter of the Dutch colony. Sections of this hedge named van Riebeck's hedge still exist in uh, Christian Bosch. The hedge is a provincial heritage site. The area of the botanical garden was used for the harvesting of timber during this period, ladies and gentlemen. The task confronting Pearson was formidable. The area was overgrown, populated by wild pigs, overrun with weeds, and planted with orchards. Money was tied in the budget was supplemented by the sale of firewood and supplemented by the sale of firewood and acorns. Uh, Pearson commenced work in the area of Christian Bost known as the Gel Planting Kaikads, which are still visible there to Day. According to the research, uh, Christian Post scientists such as Winsome Parker, Graham Duncan, and John Manning have published many scientific papers, books, and monographs on South African flora, including the Christian Post gardening series. The gardens have also published a series of monographs known sequentially as Memori Memoirs of the Botanical Survey of South Africa, Annals of the Christian Post Botanical Gardens, and Straliaiza. Uh, so the purpose of the uh, garden was the herbarium, uh, which is mainly geared towards studying the plant species of the winter rainfall region. There are roughly 250,000 dried specimens are preserved here. Local and foreign botanists uh, research proteas, health, and amarils and orchids, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so there is also the Chelsea Flower Show. In 2008, the Christian Post exhibit at the Chelsea Flower Show won a gold medal for the most creative display and the President's Cup. Uh, President Peter Buckley, to his favorite stand, the 2008 exhibit was the 16th design by David Davidson and Raymond Hudson, which established South Africa as a front runner in horticulture. The exhibit was entitled The Heart is and featured an alloy dendron detrorum. 
ladies and gentlemen so if you wanna check out uh, this garden you might wanna go uh, there is to see the buildings and uh, the moon views or all, all that stuff and the vegetation uh, the reptiles and stuff like that ladies and gentlemen so if you wanna take a visit don't forget to research more on that ladies and gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen we also have uh, this uh garden which is situated in pretoria uh, the pretoria national botanical garden nbg was established in june 1946 when the university of pretoria granted approval to the department of agriculture for the development of a botanical garden on a piece of land that was previously part of the university's experimental farm uh, so this garden was uh, established in 1946 as i have said ladies and gentlemen uh, this is a very beautiful garden as you can see in the uh, in the pigs there is also a waterfall there is also hotels there there are many things you can enjoy when you go to the pretoria uh botanical garden the main reason for the transfer of land from the university was that the land had been found to be unsuitable for agricultural experimental purposes owing partly to its isolation and also to the presence of an abundance of poison leaf, which is uh, named Dijapetalum simosum, a plant which is poisonous to livestock. Uh, that's why the university was moved away from uh, that place, and that's uh, that's when the Pretoria uh, Botanical Garden was created. So, private properties along the northern part of the ridge were acquired by the Department of Agriculture. The garden was officially opened on 23 October 19. 58. Uh, the photograph uh, was taken at the opening of the garden in 1958. I will show the photograph and the pictures. It is quite amazing to see how many trees and plants have been established in the garden since then. The National Herbarium was inaugurated in 1973. Uh, the Botanical uh, Research Institute was initially known as the Pretoria National Botanic Garden and could only be visited by special arrangement because it was primary, uh, primarily as a research facility under the management of the Botanical Research Institute BRI, uh, which traces its origins back to 1903. Uh, the institute uh, amalgamated with uh, the National Botanical Gardens of South Africa to form the National Botanical Institute in 1989, which in turn became the South African National National Biodiversity Institute, SANPI, in 2004. Uh, the garden was opened to the public on a daily basis in 1984. So the Bolusantas Avenue is uh, what I just showed in pink. The planting of Bolusantus uh, Species tree, Trees by Mr. John Evans in 1946 was one of the first plantings in the garden, a small thatched stone building adjustment to the waterfall, which was previously used as the botanical tea garden. It was built in the late 1950s and initially served as the first office of the botanical garden. So this is a beautiful garden if you white man visit there. So you should go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these are Pretoria Tea Garden has also a waterfall. Uh, it's a shaded area where the tea garden and waterfall are situated. Um, it's very popular with visitors who enjoy the tranquil atmosphere under the big shade trees. It's a favorite spot for photographers. Uh, the side garden adjacent to the tea garden boasts a variety of indigenous sky cards. Uh, a pathway takes the visitor through the Kai Kai card garden over the ridge where spectacular views of the surrounding suburbs can be seen to the other side of the ridge uh, where the succulent garden is situated. The newly developed self-guided tree road was a uh, uh, meanders past the Kaikat garden and the in the Pretoria uh, Bonetical garden. Extraordinary Madagascan uh, succulents and other indigenous uh, succulent uh, species such as aloes can be seen in the succulent garden on the northern side of the ridge, ladies and gentlemen. We also focus in this same um, Pretoria garden. We we also focus on grassland and we don't only find waterfalls only we find uh, grassland with uh, special vegetables and vegetation ladies and gentlemen the environmental uh, education center which offers curriculum based programs for teachers and learners overlooks the natural grassland uh, this is a popular research site for many scientists and children here visitors can see a very large variety of wild flowers um, yeah, that display their splendor in spring and summer uh, the curator's office is located in the garden offices which form the operational center for all garden activities ladies and gentlemen more about the programs are offered by the environmental education center if you want to my my check out that uh, the, that website in case you want to know more about this pretoria botanical garden
and ladies and gentlemen who also check uh on this one i could call it the best in my own opinion it's beautiful it's splendorous it's just elite every day everything's just uh it's just so perfect about this garden it is the kwazulu natal kwazulu natal national botanical garden uh which is situated along mayas walk in the western suburbs of peter Marisberg, uh, south africa the identification code of the kwazulu natal national botanical garden is a member of the botanic gardens conservation international bgc I, as well as the initials of its a uh, herbarium uh, so we find many many different types of uh, vegetation plants and uh, stuff um, so it's a type of a park a botanical garden which is located in peter marisbeck south africa which covers an area of uh, circa 52 hectares or 130 acres which was created in 1874 in kzn south africa uh, it was uh, opened then and it's still open now it was uh, established in 1874 plants from eastern south africa and from the northern hemisphere are cultivated here uh, the garden is open every day of the year from 8 a.m to 6 p.m in summer and from 8 a.m to 5 30 p.m in winter it features century old lane of plain trees uh, leading northwards from the entrance and uh, forested hillside with a number of footpaths uh, the drops through uh, a tributary of the Msunduze river flows at the base of the hillside uh, the garden is, uh, is one of the oldest in the world and in 2015 it was announced that it will be given an upgrade and a new lease as you can see uh, it, it is kind of old uh, as I have shown in the pictures but um, I'll show you another vision of it uh, after Afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, it is just uh, a beautiful uh, but lit. I would like to really visit uh, the garden uh, and just spend some quality time with my family and friends over there. Maybe on a picnic or on a Christmas, I might want to check out that, ladies and gentlemen. So don't forget to check out uh, this uh, garden, ladies and gentlemen, in South Africa. You can make your bookings, I don't know, maybe online. Uh, there are certain websites I will provide uh, below in the description of this video, ladies and gentlemen so ladies and gentlemen that is all for today on the gb show don't forget to tune in to our next episode as we explore more on adventure and don't forget to also comment on our video so that we know how we can improvise or uh, we can improve the video ladies and gentlemen so uh, don't forget to recommend this channel to your friends also as i have told you in the beginning ladies and gentlemen uh thank you for watching and thank you for all the support next episode we will be focusing on the buildings around africa um maybe i'll pick uh, one country from from africa and explore its uh, infrastructure and its uh, economy states and stuff like that so ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching this video cheers